everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be the last one in this series, at least the first round of this series, all about standalones. So I did one about my most favorite underrated ones, basically a bunch of recommendations. I'll link everything down below. And then I also did one about very popular ones that I think are worth the hype. And today I thought it would be fun to kind of do the opposite and just chit chat, you know, chit chat about series that should or could have been standalones, and then discuss some of them that I'm not sure if I want to continue because I feel like the book stand on its own really well, and I've heard so-so reviews on the rest, so you can convince me otherwise, but yes, just talking about series that uh, could have been shorter. Oh, I'm also not including series that I thought maybe the last book was the weakest. Like, I can think of a lot, <laughs> sadly, of series that I feel like the last book is too short or uh, there's too many things that could have been explained that weren't. I'm thinking like Red Sister or Nevernight. I feel like both of them, I wanted more in the last book. So yes, I'm not talking about those. It's definitely series that were too stretched, in my opinion. Let me include the ones that I don't have a physical copy of first before I forget. So uh, we have To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Um, not gonna lie, I did not read the last book. I will watch the movies though, because they're cute movies. Um, I read the first book liked it. You know, it's a cute YA book. Uh, I feel like everyone knows what it is about, but this girl that writes let love letters to her crushes and just never, you know, tell them anything. And then one day they're all sent and she has to deal with the consequences. And it's cute YA romancy. Um, I know it's not usually my genre, but I was fine with the first book. Uh, the second one was the most pointless thing I've ever read. It took at least half the book for anything to start happening. And it was just too obvious that things were happening just to stretch the story into a trilogy. Uh, again, I was too mad. I just did not pick up the last book. It might be good, but like I said, I will watch the movies. I'm fine with them in that format. Um, the second one, did I watch it? I think so. And it felt fine, I think. Uh, but yes, this is the perfect example of, in my opinion, a series that was stretched too much. It could have been a duology or a standalone, and I would have liked it just fine. But yes, I'm still mad about the second book, and it's been, what, two years at this point? So yes, perfect example. Another one that is now a duology, um, I wanted to talk about The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I read the first book, and I don't know how I feel about uh, Margaret Atwood as an author. I find her topics really interesting, but her writing style... I've read only one or two books by her at this point, or two or three at this point. Um, and I don't know, in this one, I like the topic. It's definitely very terrifying, very uh, too close to reality. And I did enjoy the TV show. I, I'm not done with it, but what I've watched, I have enjoyed. But at the same time, to a certain extent, I understand how the writing style was made that way because, you know, the main character, her life is pretty boring and you're just, you know, going through it with her. Uh, I just didn't find the book entertaining and I read most of my books for entertainment. Um, I don't know how to explain it better. I just, I liked the topic, but I wasn't enjoying myself while reading it. And then I read uh, The Testaments, which again, uh, interesting information in there, but again, I did not care for it. Um, let me know how you felt. I feel like the reviews were all over the place. Either people really loved it or hated it. Um, but yeah, another thing that I should have just skipped it, I guess, or maybe could have just been a standalone. I feel like some of these opinions will be more controversial than others. Um, let's go with something else that I've read recently. I read and really liked An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, and then this year I read his uh, newest release, which made it a duology, a beautifully foolish endeavor. And I'm still torn about it. It's been, what, a month or two at this point, and I... <laughs> I tend to have pretty strong opinions on my books. I will tell you what I liked, what I didn't like. But this one, I'm still undecided. <laughs> I feel very meh about it. And uh, even though some of the information that was in there was entertaining, I feel like I would have personally been just fine with it just being a standalone. How do you feel about it? That's kind of the point of the video. I want to discuss it because again, some of these are more controversial than others. But yes, in my opinion, if you're reading the first book and really enjoyed it, but you know, that's it you'd be fine. But I think the strong points in this one were the fact that uh, the main character is interesting. Uh, it's a first contact with aliens, but it seems still pretty contemporary. I feel like it's very accessible to most readers. And personally, I thought it was really interesting to see her deal with the fame of becoming YouTube famous overnight. And uh, in this one, you're just following multiple characters. And as much as, again, the information was interesting, I didn't end up uh, caring as much. It wasn't something that I couldn't put down kind of thing. So yeah, for me, this is a 
meh, I would have survived perfectly fine with just reading the first book. Uh, should we do another series that could have been less stretched? <laughs> And by the way, some of these I really love. I just feel like it wasn't necessary. Uh, this is gonna be the case with this one. I really love the Pine, the Wayward Pine series by Blake Crouch. It's a trilogy and I binge read it. Uh, definitely if you like the twist after the at the end of the first book, you're gonna wanna read the whole thing ASAP. And I did. Uh, you follow the main character who is a secret agent that is sent to this small town because uh, some of his co-workers disappear there and then weird little town vibes. That's how it starts. I'm not gonna say more, but he tends to write uh, sci-fi thrillers and I love the combo. But uh, I can generally tell you that it did not need to be three books. Two books would have been fine. Heck, I wouldn't have been mad if it had been a, just a standalone, but I can understand, you know, a twist, a cliffhanger at the first book, fine. But yeah, I felt like it was too stretched. I did overall really enjoy it. It's definitely one of my favorite, uh, very specific <laughs> topic uh, series, but did it really need to be three books? I would be curious for anyone that has read it if you feel similarly. I feel like they're about 300 pages, but it's written pretty big, which I feel like books need to be at least you know, a certain length for me to feel like they're satisfying. Okay, I literally just finished this morning the second book in this duology, uh, Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. I just finished Mallory. And honestly, I don't know why I'm feeling bad doing this video. Usually I have no issues having strong opinions, but I'm feeling mean to be like, the second book should not have been published. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the first book, I feel like I liked it more than the average person. Uh, I feel like when the movie came out, there was a bunch of controversy over it. People were saying that it was not good. Personally, I thought the movie was better than the book. Um, I really like the whole something weird is happening. People are seeing stuff and they uh, go crazy. They kill the people themselves and you know, you don't know what it is. I like the topic. I wasn't happy with the ending because of one of my pet peeves, which I'm not gonna mention because that could be a spoiler. But um, when the second book was announced, I was surprised because this was a standalone. Um, not anymore. And I read this one and honestly, it just felt really pointless. Um, I know some people probably enjoyed it. I feel like I mentioned I was going to read it and a few comments were telling me that they li liked it and that's fine. Uh, but to me, it was just like, I didn't really learn that much more information I liked. Uh, I didn't feel like it changed my mind about this one. It just felt like I read it, stuff happened, did not care more about the characters. I feel like actually I felt less attached to characters in this one. Uh, didn't really care about the story. It just didn't bring anything to me. Like I read it, you know, it's done, but I have zero opinion pretty much about this book. It just exists. And I don't feel like it was necessary. Uh, if you want to, you know, see more about the world, you get a little bit more, but that's, it wasn't satisfying to me. So uh, yes, in my opinion, this could, should have been a standalone. Ooh, okay. This one is probably gonna be one of the most controversial one. Actually, the next two. <laughs> Definitely the ones that people are gonna be like, really? Yes, really. Um, look, Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Uh, I finally read this year, Children of Ruin. And I feel like it's one of those things where I read the first book thinking it was going to be a standalone. I think pretty much everyone thought so. Uh, but it turns out it's going to be, actually, I thought buying this one, it was going to be a duology, but no, it's a trilogy. Which, when you love something, it's exciting. So I was fine with it. Uh, I really love this one. The ending is very satisfying. Like, if you just read this, you're fine. You don't need to continue unless you want to, obviously. Uh, you know, giant intelligent spiders versus humans. Great, fantastic. And then you get book two, which is whatever happens at the end of the first book. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it vague. And then other aliens, bigger, badder aliens. Um, and it seems like it's probably gonna be the same thing in the third book, like always a bigger, <sighs> I don't know. I didn't like, I really, really love some parts of this. Like some parts were like five stars to me. And then some of the parts I did not care about whatsoever. So it's one of those books that I gave three stars, like as a, but I don't feel like the three stars really represent my opinions on this, but you know, you just put it together and it becomes a three stars. So yeah, to me, this was a, I read it, uh, some bits were definitely interesting, but at the same time, I would have been fine just reading the first one. If anything, I feel like it brings down the series to me. Will I still read the third book? Obviously, uh, in the hope that it will compensate or just, you know, make more sense to me. 
But uh, yeah, again, if you have just read the first book and you're not interested in continuing, you're not gonna miss out on anything in my opinion. Okay, the last one in this part of the video is probably the one that hurts me the most to mention, but bear with me. Um, I love this series. There's a fourth book coming out and I will happily read it, but the first book is the one that I liked the most by a lot. So hence the inclusion in the video, The Long Way to Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. She's now one of my favorite authors. She writes really great character-driven, wholesome sci-fi, and she just does it really well. I really liked The Long Way to Small Angry Planet. I believe I gave it 4.5 stars or something, like really fantastic. I put it in my beginner's guide to sci-fi. I think it's a great a read, especially if you're used to reading a bunch of YA contemporaries. I feel like you would enjoy this one. Uh, again, character-driven, wholesome sci-fi, and there's a bunch of aliens in here, and it was great. Um, and then she came out with these two books, and like I mentioned, there is going to be a third one. And these are more companion novels, really, to uh, the other book. This one follows some of the characters that are in the first book. This one, I don't think it followed anyone. I don't feel like I remember <laughs> anyone else, uh, but it's in the same world. So I feel like as much as I found them really wholesome, I like her writing, I love her characters, because they're so character-driven, I felt a little so-so about them. Um, and I feel like I could have been just fine reading just this one. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those series though that I'm not angry that more books are coming out just because the good bits definitely uh, weigh more than the parts I don't really care. I feel like I will read everything that she comes out with. So it is what it is, but I still thought uh, it was worth mentioning in this video. Now, the last part in this video, I wanted to talk about books that so far I have only read the first book and um, I don't know if I want to continue because I feel like they stand really well on their own. First one. Okay. <laughs> I think we're done now. Um, I wanted to talk about you. Uh, the second book is called Hidden Bodies and I didn't read it because frankly, everyone was telling me that it was bad, so I didn't. Um, this book is really messed up. I feel like everyone knows it now because of the TV show, which I started, I need to continue it. Uh, I do think the TV show was better, but it's really interesting. I thought it was really different, you know, you're following the main character uh, being the stalker and you're seeing, reading the book and it says you, you, you as he's stalking, stalking that woman. It was good, you know, like a three something stars for me but I didn't love it enough to continue and I don't think I ever will. So in my opinion, this could have easily been a standalone. Like if you're just reading it as a standalone, you're fine. I'm cheating a little bit in here. I wanted to talk about these two books by Brendan Sanderson that are currently standalone. You have Elantris and Warbreaker. Uh, both of these are actually going to be, I think this is gonna be a duology and this a trilogy or the opposite. And I will happily, happily read them, but you don't have to wait for them to come out to enjoy these. Uh, it definitely ends open, especially this one, I believe, but um, it's fine. You can read them as standalones even right now. And I feel like they're very easy, an easy way to uh, begin reading any books by him. And yeah, I just thought I would give them a little shout out because they're obviously very good. I did not include them in my um, best standalones because they're technically not standalones. So yes, still giving him uh, a little shout out. But yes, you can read them as standalones, it's okay. Two of my favorite uh, First Contact with Aliens books. Um, we have Spin, <laughs> which I feel like every time I want to describe it, I can't say too much because it becomes a spoiler. Uh, and I feel like those are the interesting twists to read whenever you actually read it. Uh, but it starts by you following three characters that are looking at the stars and they just disappear one night and things happen. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I believe there are two other books in this uh, trilogy. This is the first book in the trilogy. And I've heard so, so things so far about the rest and I just haven't felt the need to continue. I feel like I might just because it was really interesting and I'm curious to see what else the author can uh, come up with. But if you read it on its own, you're fine. The ending is still satisfying-ish, so you don't really need to. But yes, uh, it's possibly on my TBR, but you know, you can read it as a standalone. And then the second book is The Sparrow, which uh, is a duology. I do have the book on my waiting list at the library for the ebook. I believe it's called Children of God. And I will be attempting it. I might regret it. I will let you know basically if it's worth <laughs> continuing or not. But you can totally read it as a standalone. I feel like if I weren't, if I didn't know there was a second book, I would have been perfectly fine with it. Uh, again, a first contact with aliens. I've been calling this the a little life 
of sci-fi, so be prepared. Um, a lot of messed up stuff happens, but uh, basically humanity hears a sound coming from a planet and there's a team that is sent to explore, basically an anthropologist, but one of the characters is a priest because the only people that had the money uh, to send a team this fast was uh, the Society of Jesus, so basically uh, Jesuit scientists, which I didn't think I would enjoy a kind of religious themed <laughs> first contact with aliens, but I did. And then last but not least, one book that I have read as a standalone, but there is a second book, Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. This is a uh, historical fiction sci-fi. <laughs> I really like the trope of someone reliving their day or their lives over and over again. In this one, you're following a woman who relives her life every time, you know, she dies. She is born again, same time and everything. And she doesn't really remember, but I'm going to keep it vague to not spoil it because I feel like that's part of the interesting stuff to learn. But she is born right at the end of... No, she's born in 1910, so she uh, lives through both uh, world wars, so it's definitely the historical portion in there. I did enjoy it. Um, I believe I gave it about four stars. Super interesting topic, uh, but the second book, I believe, follows her brother, and I don't really feel the need to continue. Definitely let me in the comment section if you think I should, but uh, yeah, if you read it as a standalone, you're fine. This is it. These are all the series that I think should or could have been standalones, and uh, some more books that I did read as standalones. I might continue, I might not, but I feel like they are great recommendations of books that you can still consider <laughs> a standalone if you want to. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know if you want me to do like a second round, more recommendations of the past, you know, the underrated and then popular ones that I think are worth the hype, and I will definitely do that soon. I think it will take me longer to accumulate more for this version, but you know, definitely the other ones. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting the other videos on the screen. I recommend you check those out, and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.